a ghost story. Oh, it can't be a good ghost story. You, oh, yeah. You can't beat a good ghost story. It can't be a good, especially when it actually happened. <laughs> yes. Now, this, this uh, is another interview that I performed while I was in the UK, in Wales, uh, with an old friend of mine, Daryl. Uh, I've known Daryl since we were little kids. We've been friends forever. And he told me this story many years ago. And I was very impressed by the story. And I kept telling him, I said, next time we meet up or get together, I'm going to have to record this story because I need to get this recorded because it is such a great ghost story. Um, And it's very real. And the reason that that this is very real is that uh, anybody who knows Daryl would know that he's very down to earth, very pragmatic does not believe in ghosts, does not believe in UFOs, thinks it's all nonsense. And if somebody starts talking about ghosts and UFOs, he will dismiss it instantly. Oh, this is silly. This is blah, blah, blah. Nonsense. Which is strange because he had a very powerful and terrifying ghost encounter, which radically changed his point of view on the existence of ghosts. And I sat down with him, with my recorder, and recorded him telling the story to the best of his ability. Now, admittedly, this was in a pub, <laughs> uh, because that we were going to meet up one night for, for a drink, and I thought, I'm not going to let this pass. So I, I took my recorder with me in my pocket, And we went down there, and we sat down. We ordered a round of drinks. We sat down, and I said, okay, before you start drinking, I want you to tell me your ghost story. And I recorded the conversation. So I'm about to play it right now, and then we'll talk about it. So this is a good one, and this is very true and very real. Here we go. Best estimation. Best, I know it was a long time ago. When when did it happen? Well, I'm 51, and it must have happened when I was about 18, okay. 18, 19, maybe. Yeah. So 30 odd years ago. So you're working in the co-op in Swansea, and you, how long have you how long have you been working there? I go well, about 18 months probably. So a new job. New, new. young, out, just out of school, a little bit out, a couple of years after that. But you've got to get a feel for what this building was. Right, just describe the building. People who listen to this, are, are mostly American or not, but this was a huge kind of department store, like a, a Macy's or a, one of these stores. That it had five floors to it, hundreds of square foot. Basement, ground floor, first floor, second floor, and then a third floor of offices and a fourth floor of offices. And it was my job to go into this building when it was closed and open it, turn on every light, open it. So you, you would go in early in the morning on my own, on your own, and, and get it, turn off the alarms and open up everything. That's so the first thing you do is turn off the alarms. So you're ready for business when everyone comes into work. When everybody comes. So what, what time was it? 6:30 a.m., 7 a.m. Cold, dark days, and of course you'd fo- you'd come into the building, as you said, you'd switch off the alarm, then you'd have to walk to the basement where, don't forget, there's no power on now, so all I'd have was a flashlight or torch. <laughs> <laughs> and you'd work your way down underground to where the power room was, and this power room would literally light up the building but only sort of emergency lighting so you still didn't have total uh, brightness you had to still use the torch so there's just a dim dim illumination from the emergency lighting and you're walking through the corridor with the torch 6 30 in the morning it's in the winter so it's dark outside very dark yeah. and then what happened so the, 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 this was the easy part the basement was the easy part what you then had to do was walk up now you've got to imagine this building Huge, huge floors. Either end were massive staircases. Do you remember how it was? Huge stone staircases that that went all the way to the very top floor. And at the top, when I got to the top, your next job was to turn the power of the elevator, to turn the lift on. So you had to walk. So you'd go up out of the tunnels of the basement when you've turned on the, the power, head to the left side, open the door. 
You would walk up those stairs and go onto the ground floor, open the door, right across, and do the same, up the stairs, right across, up the stairs, right across, and keep opening all the doors. And then you'd get to the, to the fifth floor. And that was the end that I hated. I hated this part of it. All it was was a small corridor, the length of the building, with offices each side of the corridor. So, when you're, because you know you're alone in the building, you're walking along, and it, the feeling you have, everything is totally fine and comfortable until you get to this section. Always, whenever I did this job, whenever I get to this corridor, I hated it. Yeah. And the only way I can ever think of it, I've thought of this since, since I was 18 doing this thing. The only thing I can ever think of that was similar, there was two horror films. Yeah. And I'd always think of this as you open the door and we'll go down this corridor. I'd rush down this corridor. And it was... The, inc- the Incredible Melting Man was one of the films. Yeah. And in the trailer, somebody would be going down a corridor with somebody running behind them. But you would ne- they'd always be looking back and you'd never see who this person was. And the other one was always in the trailer of The Shining when the kid was going through the maze. Right. So it was always that feeling of somebody coming up behind you. As you were walking. As you were walking, mainly I was, as I was trotting. So you're moving fast. You're mo- always moving fast. So get it, always. Get it over with. Always. Yeah. And on this one day, I mean, and I'd done this a hundred times, but this one day I was going down the corridor and I, I've got a bunch of keys with about 30, 40 keys on it. Nothing was electric in them days or any kind of technology. You had big brass keys. Yeah. So I'd open the door, headed down the corridor, and had the worst feeling of somebody coming up behind me all the time. But this day especially. As I got to the other end of the corridor, I was just rushing, trying to find the key that would open that door. Because for some reason, I was absolutely petrified. Before I entered the corridor, I turned on the power of the elevator. I managed to open the door. Two big brass doors with glass in the middle of them, heavy as hell. Hit the doors open, swung them open, and hit the button for the elevator. As the elevator opened, the lights were on in the elevator. Standing right behind me, because I looked in the mirror of the elevator, there was an old woman. The doors had shut, and she was standing there behind the glass. And I could see her in the mirror. And as I turned round in the elevator and the door shut, there was nobody there. And I am the person who don't believe in ghosts. You know, I'm your, I'm your mirror self. I've known you since we were whatever age, and I am your mirror self of uh, not believing in any of this stuff. So, all right, Brad. Sorry, man. Okay. All right. So, I'm trying to get this straight in my mind. So you, you get to the lift. And there's a mirror reflecting you behind you. As the lift doors open. Oh, I see. Inside the lift, in the there's lift a mirror itself, and there's a mirror where you, oh. like every lift you get into. Right, right. And I'm looking at myself entering the lift, but right behind me, behind the doors that had shut behind me, there was a small old woman standing. But when you're in the lift, as I'm stepping into the lift, the mirror that I'm looking at in front of me is reflecting what's behind me. And it's an old woman. An old woman, small. White head standing behind the doors looking through the glass. And I've always stuck in my mind the oh, same thing. And when you turned around, there's, no, there's nobody there. No one there whatsoever. And the scariest part of it all, and I don't know if you can remember this, and I've got shivers going down my spine now as I'm saying it. As the door shut, all I heard was a, a sigh. Somebody breathing out. Quiet. <sighs> Relief. So, what, so what happened then? I mean, obviously you were terrified, right? When when you when you got to the bottom, did did you talk talk to anyone or say anything? I'm on to my anyone? own. I went back down the bottom, went outside the back door, and stood there shaking like a leaf till staff started turning up to the building, where they all laughed at me. Did you tell them about it? I've told loads of them there. And then anyone else said, "Oh, I've seen that, or I've witnessed anything." Loads of people have spoke about the woman, because what had happened is those staircases I told you about that I would walk up. These are towering, towering staircases of the f- going up to the fifth floor. And they're huge old stone steps. Yeah, yeah. And straight down the middle, you go from top to bottom. Yeah. And at 1950s, 1960s, it said a woman who had given birth at an old age and lost, and had lost the child had come into the building, walked straight to the top, and jumped off the top. And as she went, she hit every f- 
hit the sides of the stairs all the way down. Now this building still exists along with the staircase, right? It still exists. It's about four different stores in there now, and I, I don't know about the the staircase. They must be there because it was, you know, it was a, it's part of the structure of the building. It's a great story. Thank, Thank you, Daryl. Well, there you go. A Welsh ghost story. Here's an interesting thing. Uh-huh. As um, he was telling the story, we have um, uh, a building, a co-op building, that is nearly exactly the same as what he described <laughs> in town. It's, it, uh-huh. it used to be called, uh, I think it was Mayfair House. And basically, back in the... In the 80s, it was uh, it was like a large department store. It had like four, I think it was four or five floors, like yeah. he suggested, and it had staircase. I think it only had one staircase, but it had the the large uh, stone staircase that goes all the way up, and it had the the, the down the middle was straight from the top to the bottom, just a sh- like a sh- a shaft all the way down. It was completely open. Yeah, and I remember those when he mentioned the uh, the. Um, uh, the lift, I remember exactly the kind of lift that he's talking about. With a mirror. Because I'm sure that they made all these co-ops the same yeah. back then. Yeah, I'm with sure the they same did. fittings right. and fixtures. Mm-hmm. The, the, basically, there's two reasons for the lift, for the mirror. One is for, for vanity. You can touch your makeup up or whatever in, your, in the mirror. But also, is to make the lift seem bigger. Yes, because they put a big mirror in the back to make it, you know, so it's not so claustrophobic. Right. And and when he told me that the when he told the story part of uh, of him the, the lift doors opening and he's waiting to go in the lift and he's looking directly at the mirror, and then he looks at the double doors that are shut behind him and he sees a face what looking at him. Wow, I don't think I would have gone back to that job the next day. <laughs> I really don't think I would. Well, have he gone back he to said in job. the interview that it it was uh, when he because he opened the door it lifts and he's he's walking into the to the to the yeah. elevator and the mirror on the back side he can see himself in the mirror walking in but directly behind him, standing behind the door, was a little old woman. With, now, the with white thing hair. is, when he's going down, he hears the sigh, and is that as yeah. would that be a signal that this lady has been trying to be seen, maybe, or by someone for lo- a very, very long time, and it's never been the right kind of person or yeah. in the right state of mind to see this person. And so, but the, the thing achieved. is, this is the weird part, though. He saw the the ghost of the old lady. Yeah, he didn't see it live. With he saw the reflection. The reflection. He, yeah. When he looked in the mirror, he saw himself walking into the elevator. But then stand, yeah. standing directly behind him in the reflection yeah. was this little old lady with white hair. And then as he, you know, that scared the shit out of him. He turned around. There's nothing there. And there's nobody there. And as the doors of the elevator are closing, that's when he hears the, <sighs> the sigh. Yeah. And then he goes down to the bottom floor, immediately leaves the building, waits outside, terrified until the rest of the staff and people start showing up for work. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be quite. I'd be quite. Uh, I'd be quite honest that you know I, I, the, the paranormal fascinates me. I've I've been into it for a long time. I've read many books and I've watched many documentaries and I've had a few experiences here and there. I've done my dabblings with EVP and all that stuff. And and yes, I have had some success with EVP. And uh, but I don't think if I ever went to an old mansion or an old house and and I actually did witness a, an apparition or something, I think it would profoundly. Uh, even though you think you're prepared for it, I don't yeah. think you are prepared for it when it happens. No, I agree. I, I agree. I think that it would have, it would make anyone that experiences anything like that. I think it changes them as a person, mm-hmm. uh, and it also changes the way that they think about their own yeah. reality and that you know the the way that we are and what you know. But I think that, um, that, that not only is it, and also the the interesting thing is that for a long time when he was doing this job for. What, 18 months he said he was in the job for. Right. Uh, he did this job and he always had that feeling on the top floor of yes. something coming up behind him. So it was as if he was picking up on something that was Well, you that, find that. that, that already it, there. The environment, you know? uh, any any building yeah. or location that is affected, um, you can feel it. Mm. And, yeah, yeah. and, and he, he was feeling, it's that feeling of being watched, the feeling of not being, al- you know, you, you know, you're alone, you know, yeah. you, you're the only person there. There's nobody around, but you have uh, a, a, fee- a very strong feeling 
that you're not alone and that mm. somebody's watching you. And it's not a pleasant feeling. And that's yeah. the kind of thing he was, ever, the, the, that was the, when he would open up in the mornings, he'd go through each floor, open up, turn on the power, turn, on, turn off the alarms, blah, blah, blah. Every floor, fine, nothing, normal. But the minute he get to the fifth floor, and he'd walk off the top of the staircase and open the, the big doors to go on to the fifth floor. As soon as you open those doors, the feeling would rush over him like, I'm, not, I'm makes, not supposed to that, be here. I need to get out. That kind of makes sense. That mm -hmm. makes sense because if you think about it, let's just jump into the mindset of the lady. She's in a distraught way. She's decided she's going to end it. She's had enough. She thinks, I'm going to go and, and, and commit suicide. She goes into this place. She walks all those stairs in a in a very distressed way. And she gets to the point uh, at the top of the stairs where she's going to jump off. The amount of emotion and everything at that point, those few seconds before she plummets over the, the banisters right down, that she's that they're, they're, there's the imprint. That's yeah. the imprint. Mm -hmm. That's where... And and this is the floor where he was experiencing those feelings from. So yeah, I mean, it kind of you know you can kind of stitch those things together. Yeah. You know? Great story though, and I, I, even though he told it to me years ago, and I was very impressed uh, to hear it again and to finally get it on record and get it recorded um, mm. was was very satisfying. I'm, I'm very glad. creepy, very, very creepy, very, very and it creepy. would be interesting. I mean, obviously, you know, he said it's changed hands now and it's different things, and it, but it would be interesting to see if anyone else has experienced. Oh yeah, because the build the building, now, you know, the building is still there. It's absolutely know? still there. In fact, when I was when I was in Wales. Um, I, I walked right by it. It, it it's still there. Might it, have to do a bit of intact. Uh, internet investigating. Yeah, the, the building is still there and yeah. intact. But but when he was working there in the in the eighties, it was the one building was one store. It was yeah, yeah, that's one, like the one here. That whereas now building, it's yeah. it's been split into there's there's multiple stores yes. oc occupying yeah. the building now. But the building itself still exists, and the staircase and the floor, it's still there. So it would be interesting to see if the new tenants from uh, the new people that, that are running the, the building and the stores, if, if they've ever experienced, thing, experienced anything up on the, uh, the fifth floor of the old co-op building in Swansea, South Wales.